this week's Parsha is Parshat Emor. Emor comes from the Hebrew word speak, to speak out. And it deals with some very ancient rites that are not totally familiar to us because we no, lo- hung, no longer have the institution of the ancient temple and the sacrifices. But there's something we do know very well about it. I'm sure you'll know the number of Jews, you might be one of them, whose name is either Cohen or Katz. Those refer to the connection to the ancient priesthood, the Kohanim, the priesthood that conducted the ancient ritual. In fact, you know, they did this genetic study and they've discovered that people who bear the name Cohen or Katz are connected historically to the priesthood. They actually have some type of uh, genetic marker that they have in common, which suggests that there is a great deal of reality to the fact that they did descend from this one group within the tribes of Israel that were identified as the Kohanim, the priesthood. And of course, we know that their job was to offer the sacrifices in the temple to approach the altar, and therefore they had to be, according to Torah, in a special state of purity. So, for example, we're told in the Torah that they're not to shave, smooth any parts of their heads. Well, you're familiar with that because you know there are certain people in the ultra-Orthodox community who've interpreted that to mean not to shave, they've interpreted it to mean never even to cut. Most Jews don't interpret it that way, most Orthodox Jews don't, but those who do, so they don't even cut the corners of their hair right by the ears, so they get what we call the payas. And we've all seen pictures of that, or we've seen people uh, here in our own Miami area who observe in that tradition. We're also told that they should not come into contact with a dead body, with a corpse, because they have to be at a higher level of purity. So you might be familiar with Kohanim, who still observe that tradition, and therefore they will not go to a cemetery. If they go to a cemetery, they'll stand on the side, they'll stand on the road. They won't approach where the burial places are. And they'll go, of course, for a family member, but for others, they'll stay, keep their distance or stand outside of the funeral parlor because they're observing that ancient tradition. There are many Kohanim who still observe that. And there is also a rule that says we're not permitted to cut ourselves, and that's a rule that applies not only to Kohanim, but to all Jews. When we hear that we've suffered a loss in our family, a loss of a loved one, we're told... Don't gash your bodies. Have respect for your bodies. Not like inflict harm upon yourselves. And that's why we have the custom of kriya, of cutting either a ribbon or cutting a piece of clothing. The custom of not approaching the dead body for a kohen or going into a cemetery, we know that in a different way. And that is, what do we do when we leave the cemetery? We're all familiar with it. It's a habit. We go over and we ask, where's the water? There's always a place to wash. It might be at the exit. It might be right near the, um, the funeral parlor itself, and a place to wash our hands so that before we leave the cemetery, we have separated death from life. We know when we go to a shiva house the first night, we see water have been placed outside the house so that before the mourners enter the house, they've just come from the cemetery, they can wash their hands. The reason this is so important today is what we realize is many of the restrictions that used to be on the koinim are no longer restrictions only for the Koinim, but we all observe those traditions. We all cut Kriya. We all wash our hands when we leave a cemetery, although we do enter the cemetery, which some Koinim don't. What this teaches is this, that what happened in Judaism is there was a leveling of the playing field. There was a democratization. Those things which were forbidden to the priesthood alone, which elevated them above the rest of the community of Israel, giving them special obligations and special privileges, they were all leveled and democratized. Everyone in the Jewish community became equal. Whereas you couldn't offer the sacrifice without the priest there, which, by the way, is true in the Catholic Church. You can't have the most important part of the ceremony on Sunday morning. You can't have the Mass, right? You can't conduct that without the priest present. But in Judaism, what happened was, it was completely changed. When we have a religious service, we do honor the Kohen with the first honor to the Torah. But if he's not there, we continue and we call someone else. There's nothing we have in our religious service that requires anything more than ten Jews. Ten Jews. Doesn't matter if you're a Kohen, a Levi, an Israelite, and outside the Orthodox community, whether you're a man or a woman, as long as you're an adult. What Judaism did is it raised the level of every Jew, saying we are all holy, kulanu, kedoshim, we're all responsible. We all have obligations, and we are all privileged 
to approach the altar, to come to the Torah, to kiss the Torah, to say the blessings over the Torah. These are things that 2,000 years ago in the days of the ancient temple were restricted in many ways to the Kwanim. So what we learn in today's portion is that we have all become a holy people. We've all accepted those obligations and we've all been elevated to a level of holiness so that we can all participate in Jewish ritual and be part of it. And the goal, therefore, is to do what Judaism has done for the last 2,000 years, expand the number of people who can participate in the ritual, who can be called to the Torah, who can come to the Bema. Rather than restrict it and weaken ourselves as a nation, let's expand it so that we have more and more adults participating in the beauty of Jewish ritual, sensing that obligation, and also sensing the joy of being part of the Jewish ritual, both of synagogue life and in our home life. So Shabbat Shalom, and enjoy reading this ancient portion of the Torah with this modern message.